Good morning and welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday in the season of Easter. We want to say a special word of welcome not only to our members here at North Wasika Lutheran and Faith Lutheran in Janesville, but also to those of you who might be joining us as our guests this morning. We are thrilled and delighted that you could join us as we gather as God's people to hear God's word, to sing God's praises, and to um, enjoy our time of fellowship together. There are announcements for you to read. Those are found printed in the bulletin that were emailed out to you earlier this week. If you have not received a bulletin via email, you may call the church office on Wednesdays and Thursdays from 10 to 3 p.m., and we will make sure that you are put on our, mail, our email list and you'll be sent the bulletin ahead of time. And now let us begin our worship with the thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like the rains to our thirsting earth, like the streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church where we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Gather Us In, hymn number 532, and we will sing just the first verse. us your son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading from Holy Scripture is from 1 John, the fourth chapter. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, 
because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we might have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not received perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. Here ends the first lesson. The Holy Gospel is according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. About a week ago, Nancy and I were in the church kitchen um, here at Faith, making ourselves some lunch when I happened to glance out the window at the Peace Garden. After weeks of watching and waiting, it happened. The sight of lots of daffodils poking through the soil and finally beginning to bloom. I always loved seeing those first new blossoms in the spring. It brings hope to the soul that summer is nearly here. At long last, the fullness of life is just be beyond our grasp. That's the same hope and joy Jesus is giving us in today's gospel reading. He too was using a horticultural image to teach us about matters of faith, a faith that is vibrant and growing a faith that is all about the nurturing and tending of many gardeners and the excitement and joy found in the bearing of fruit and blossoms and blooms when the harvest is bountiful. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. From today's Gospel reading, we learn the following things. First, faith, like the fruit of the vine, is a gift. It is a gift given to us to enjoy, and its purpose is to grow. And not just grow, but grow hardy 
and strong. Just like when we plant our own gardens, we expect yield, and we look forward to the fruits of the harvest. So too does God expect yield from the seeds of faith that he has planted within and amongst us. And more importantly, God takes pride and joy in tending to the seedlings of faith within us and joyfully anticipates the fullness and the abundance of the harvest. What a great gift that our gardener has given to us. What wonderful seeds he has planted within us. Secondly, like any good gardener will tell you, Growth doesn't usually just happen by chance. Most of the time, it takes some effort. It also takes knowledge, skill, and grace. The same is true of our faith. It doesn't just happen. It was given to us as a gift. But like any gift, if it isn't nurtured, tended to, cared for, it will not grow. It takes the hands of many gardeners, God's and even our own, to flourish. How can we tend the seeds of faith that God has planted within and among us? We read and are nurtured by his word. We come to the table to eat and drink and be nourished. We stay connected to the body of Christ and its fellowship helps us to stay rooted even when the sun is beating down and we began to feel a little parched. Jesus says it best when he says, those who abide in me and I am them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Just like a branch apart from the vine withers, so too does our faith when we fail to abide or stay connected or rooted in him. Thirdly, and this comes the hard part, pruning and cutting are oftentimes necessary. That's never the fun part, is it? How many of us truly enjoy this part? And yet without this necessary step, a full harvest will not be possible. Those of you who prune back your bushes each year know that when they do grow back, they grow back larger, fuller, and stronger than ever before. You could do the same thing to flowering plants like geraniums. If you deadhead them, the flowers will come back even bigger and more beautiful, more abundantly than before. That's the same kind of vision and hope that God has for each of us. It's a big vision. It's a big hope. Thus, God prunes us through his word, through confession of sin, and through the process of softening and opening our hearts. And while this process might not always be our favorite, it is always done with a purpose. It's not about cutting down or cutting away. It is always done for the purpose of new life and growth in abundance. And fourth, finally comes the good part, the part that we have been waiting for, enjoying the harvest. How many of you are going to be enjoying picking berries in June? Who can forget the first sweet bite of the season when the juice from the fruit runs down our chins? Tasting that fruit is so sweet. I know personally my favorite is when my family would peel ripe peaches so that my mom could make us fresh peach pie warm from the oven. The best peaches were the ones where the juice literally ran down your arm as you peeled. And those juicy peaches made the best pies. And if we enjoy the taste of this sweetness, this earthly fruit, how can we not want to the rest of the world to know the fruit that God invites us to share too? When our faith grows and bears fruit, we become more than just disciples. It is then we become apostles, sent ones, ones who can't help but spread the word and plant the seeds. We become the branches that Jesus was talking about in the gospel lesson. We remain rooted in the vine, eager to grow and spread until that time when one can no longer tell 
where one branch ends and another begins. Because rooted to the vine, we all become one in mission, one in bearing fruit and bearing deeds of love. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The harvest, the abundance of new life, the sweetness of the fruit, that in the end is what it's all about for ourselves, for our communities, and for the world. May God bless the seeds of faith planted within us, that with effort and pruning, the harvest may grow to abundance as we grow into becoming apostles of the risen Christ, bearing fruit for all the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our hymn of the day today is hymn number 362, At the Lamb's High Feast We Sing. worship um, by sharing in a word of prayer. God of all fruitfulness, you abide in your church and your church abides in you. Cleanse us by your word and give yourself to the whole church on earth so that it bears fruit and witness, witnesses to your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth. As we wonder at the beauty of creation, may we seek vital connections among all that depends on the earth for life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you rule the nations with justice and with love. Give the leaders of the earth assurance of your abiding presence, that they lead not by fear, but with love for those whom they are called to serve. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you have loved us so that we might love others. We pray for all who are in need of your love. We pray for those who are poor or lowly, outcast, weak, or fearful. Provide for the needs of all. And today we pray for your continued healing for Larry, for Jordan, and for Wayne. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, you gather us with all the saints by the power of your Spirit. With them and with the communion of saints, may our hearts live forever in your keeping. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we now raise our prayers unto you, trusting in your never-failing goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let us receive the blessings of Almighty God. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Our sending hymn is hymn number 674, Let Us Tongues and Talents Employ. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. <laughs> 